Welcome to Rob Schmidt tonight. A couple months ago, Congressman James Comer admitted that House Oversight had lost a key informant, Professor Gal Luft, who alleged that Joe Biden had taken millions from China, bribes from an adversary. Gal Luft had said he had warned the FBI that Biden was compromised in 2019, and six agents met him in Europe. But at some point, Luft dropped off the map when the FBI responded by trying to charge him for being an arms dealer. Although the bookish Israeli professor you see over my shoulder swears he's never sold a bullet in his life. He says it was retaliation for his accusation against Biden. Years ago, Gal Luft worked with CEFC China, an energy arm of the CCP that paid the Bidens millions of dollars, money that ran through multiple shadow accounts, ending up in many Biden family member accounts. We've seen the wires. It's all been proven by House Oversight. Luff's allegations, though, were massive, and although he was just one of many credible whistleblowers, his temporary disappearance allowed the media to briefly cover the Biden scandal because it suddenly had a blemish, and they jumped at the chance. Plenty of mocking by, quote, journalists who have been ignoring a massive pile of credible evidence of a huge scandal of which Gal Luft was just a part of. But then Gal Luft resurfaced a month ago, and today the New York Post shared an exclusive 14-minute video of him, a video that another whistleblower who worked with the Bidens in China has told me exclusively perfectly aligns with his experience working with CEFC. Gal Luft says the real Russiagate scandal is Joe Biden and China. That's the real collusion a reality that the establishment, of course, cannot have. And so they're going to ignore this bombshell allegation and just wait for another blemish like they did when Gal Luft initially disappeared. This is how they sounded. You're telling me you lost another submarine? <laughs> Come on, you lost an informant. You lost the informant. The guy that you claimed gave you all this information that you built this entire charade on. He doesn't have the bombshell. He doesn't have the smoky gun. He doesn't have evidence. And he's lost his informant. I mean, this is beyond embarrassing. In this case, you've also <laughs> got to hold the informant. You've got to hang on to him to make sure he actually can cooperate with your investigation. This is all bunk. This is based on absolutely no real evidence whatsoever. By the way, that informant is now back. That's MSNBC host Joe Scarborough. That's New York Times editorial board member Mara Gay. These people are not stupid. They're just pitiful human beings, such desperate shills for the establishment that they're helping it cover up this very obvious atrocity, hoping that they can convince you to ignore an avalanche of incredibly obvious evidence of what's going on and pretend that a conspiracy theory, which is what they call this, a conspiracy theory can somehow include Biden's own business partners testifying with factual evidence like Tony Bobolinsky did when he clearly outlined his dealings with China when he was a partner of Hunter Biden and told us that Joe Biden was in the room when the deals were cut. Business partner Rob Walker told the FBI the same. Joe was in on the deals in China. How about the text message from Hunter that nobody's refuted, sitting with his father to the Chinese communist official Zhao demanding money nine days before the Bidens got five million bucks from China. None of this has been refuted. But remember, it's a conspiracy theory. Other whistleblowers detailing how and why they paid the Biden family. How about all the shadow accounts created to conceal the source to launder the money? All of this verified. Nobody's pushing back on this, but it's a conspiracy theory. The laptop that details all of this and claims Hunter gave his father half of his income. With all of that, they focused on Gal disappearing for a month. This is the regime media. This is how they sound. Most Americans have no idea. They're not clued into these, you know, ginned up conspiracy theories. The rest of America is going, what are you talking about? Nobody cares about these conspiracy theories except for the small uh, part of the Republican base that is controlling the Republican Party. That's a New York Times editorial board member. This is an astonishing cover-up we're witnessing right now. And nobody can refute any of the facts. Everybody's just walking around pretending like the facts don't exist, even though they're hitting everybody in the face. You wonder what these same people would say 
now that the lost informant is back, I'd give anything to be in that room when they make these claims. Make it a point to watch the exclusive video of Gal Luft on the New York Post website, one of the oldest newspapers in America, by the way. You'll be shocked at how measured this Israeli professor is when he tells his story. Luff says while working for CEFC in China, or with CEFC in China, he witnessed the Bidens take payments, millions, as House oversight has proven, from people with direct ties to the Chinese military. He says these CCP operators had a mole inside the FBI that was feeding them our classified intelligence. And what are we talking about right now? Oh, Donald Trump waved around a paper in front of a couple of people he was very close to. They want to throw him in prison for the rest of his life for that, but they're going to ignore this. And again, another whistleblower whose name you know says these allegations coming from Gal Luft align exactly with his experience working with Joe and Hunter Biden in China. Chairman of House Oversight, Congressman James Comer joins me now. Sir, good to have you back on. Tell us uh, about this man. The Post describes him as well-connected in intelligence circles in Washington, D.C., where he ran a think tank, the Institute for the Analysis of Global Security, with former CIA Director James Woolsey and former National Security Advisor Robert McFarlane as advisors. That's who this man is. He's not just some weird guy that popped up out of nowhere. No, he's very credible, and the people on MSNBC who made fun of me when I said uh, we had an informant that was missing, they should feel like fools right now. They are fools. Uh, and this is their worst nightmare because, uh, again, this is a credible witness that the FBI flew all the way to Brussels to interview and sent several agents to interview. Uh, this is someone that knew about CEFC in detail long before the laptop ever became public. So we feel that this is a very credible witness. We feel that this is someone that uh, we need to talk to uh, in our investigation, someone we will communicate with in our investigation. We're going to request the notes from the FBI meeting from the FBI. That is forthcoming. Uh, we want to know uh, why the FBI has never made public this interview. And look, Rob, this is a trend. Rob Walker said he met with the FBI and told them very damaging stuff about Joe Biden and Hunter Biden. We know that Bobulinski met with the FBI and did the same thing. Now we know the computer repair guy did. Now we know the IRS whistleblower did. And now Gal Luff did. But what did the FBI do? You know, our sources in the FBI, the ones that Senator Grassley's worked closely with, say they did nothing. They never investigated any of this. They turned a complete blind eye. And the more bank records we get in, the more depositions we do, the more people that come forward the more damaging this is for the Biden family. I just, I don't get how they, they, they wanted to cover this up. Why? I mean, it's, it's, it's like, think if, you're, if, if you were a, you know, a, a detective in a small town and there's a serial killer and you figure out who the serial killer is and you just work every day to cover it up. What, what is the motive for the FBI to try and protect this massive influence peddling scheme and all of this money coming in? I mean, this is a vulnerability that, that essentially means that the, the, the Chinese Communist Party, if Gal Luff's accusations are true, and again, there's tons of evidence coming in from all sides that point to the same thing, that the CCP has effectively infiltrated the White House. Why would anybody want to cover that up? Why wouldn't you want to put that out in the open, expose that, get rid of that rot? That's a great question. That's a question we're going to continue to ask the FBI. And look, the CEFC was owned by the Chinese Communist Party. The Bidens took millions of dollars from CEFC. Now think about that. The president of the United States and his family has taken millions of dollars from a company that's 100 percent wholly owned by the Chinese Communist Party. And they were involved in anything. I've said this in interviews. They weren't just trying to buy American energy. They were trying to buy real estate. They were trying to buy farmland. They were trying to buy interest into defense contractors and manufacturers. This is a bad deal that the Bidens are, are tied up in. And all the people that were affiliated with the Bidens in this deal have at one point or another spoken to the FBI about it, but yet the FBI never did anything. Are we going to hear, at, at what point do we get to hear from Bobulinski in front of Congress, you know, in a prime time setting, you know, where, where people can actually see it, where it can't be ignored? You know, Rob Walker, these are people that worked 
nobody can dispute that. They worked with the Bidens. They have right. no reason to lie, and they're telling us what happened here. I mean, Tony Bobulinski has been hiding out uh, for, for years now. He's been hiding out. This did him no yep. benefit to tell this story. When do we get to hear from these people, right. and when, when do we subpoena or get Devin Archer in front? When does that happen? Very soon. What I wanted to do, Rob, was to get the bank records first, to present the evidence of all the, the millions of dollars of the Biden family taken in. Because remember, the press denied that. They said that that never happened. They said those were legitimate business deals. They said none of the money ever happened while Joe Biden was vice president. We've proven that to be wrong. They did get money when he was vice president. They have taken millions of dollars, and there are no legitimate businesses. Now we're bringing, we're in the deposition phase, and Devin Archer is supposed to be uh, in front of the oversight committee for a deposition next week. Once next Devin week. Archer comes forward, and says what he has to say, then you're going to start seeing other people like Bob Alinsky and Walker and other people come and tell their stories. And I think what you're going to see is there's a consistent pattern here of a narrative that is far different than what Joe Biden's told the American people and far different than what the, the pitiful journalists on the MSNBC have been saying. Oh, yeah. I, I can't wait for these hearings, and I can't wait to see that show the next day. You're right about that. Congressman Comer, we appreciate you coming on. Thanks for having me.